I think the things that I love every single morning is new friends and consistent friends and just that we're all here for this moment and this time and just kind of figuring it out. And I think one of the things I just want to encourage you guys with is it's not about <laughs> some weird attendance policy. It's not about figuring out a checklist and a to-do list and how does that compare to everybody else's, but it's just being all you today who God intended you to be, be nothing more, nothing less, and just being able to rest in that and allow others to rest in that as well. I think that's one of the things is when Jesus talks about judgment, he talks about the plank in our own eye, I think we just have this tendency to be so critical with others, to be so bent on what they should be doing, what they should be thinking. We see that in how we how we analyze politics, how we analyze uh church leadership, how we analyze our neighbors, how we analyze coaches, how we analyze athletes and celebrities. And we're just prone into this mentality of we're constantly placing ourselves in the judgment seat, constantly evaluating, constantly trying to figure out do people measure up, are people what we think they should be? Are, and I guess I'm just finding myself wondering whoever made me the judge because then you feel it, right? Because you know how judging you are, you then wonder who's judging me. I see it in my middle schoolers and them trying to figure out like how how do I fit in and yesterday Maddie and I ended up in this conversation where she just was talking about and she's okay with me sharing this that she was just dealing with some insecurities and it just dawned on both of us. Do you know anyone who's not insecure? I mean to have faith is to kind of say, listen, I'm insecure of myself. And so I need to find my security in something outside of myself. And Christianity is the only one that says your security is in Christ, not in what you do, not in how you perform, not in how you earn. And yesterday, one of those things that we ended up talking about as a family, and I encourage you to maybe think a little bit about is Simone Biles. I'm sure you guys have seen that she removed herself from the, the team competition. And in the end, she just admitted that she was struggling mentally, that she was struggling with the pressure and handling that pressure. And she felt like she needed to make the decision to pull herself out for her own mental health. And I gotta tell you, I've been profoundly, I guess, challenged and maybe just wondering, the response has been so angry, really. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, someone who's won so many gold medals, yet there's still this, you owe us. She doesn't even know us. We didn't even know her. And yet I'm prone to say, well, if I was in her position, you know what? I never will be. I won't be able to flex like that, flip like that, jump like that, land like that. And yet in the midst of it, I missed this part, which I thought was so amazing is there was a post put out of her clapping, screaming, yelling that she was walking up to her teammates and holding the chalk for them to make sure that they were ready to go, that she was coaching the alternate, that she was whispering in her ear, that she was still there and cheering on. And I don't know. I don't know whether it was right or wrong for her to step out, but I wonder if that's even the wrong question. Because Peter puts it this way. He talks about just to not grow weary and loving one another. And for a love covers a multitude of sins. And in that we're not loving what somebody does. We're not loving their performance. We're loving them for them because God made them. I just got done reading this book called Everywhere You Look and in it there's this quote that, that I posted today that I've just been trained to think of people in a Genesis 3 world rather than remembering that they were intended for a Genesis 1 world. Meaning I see them and define them by their sin, by their weakness, by their, by their deformities rather than seeing them as defined by the image of God. Whole. Man, you wanna talk about being a different kind of loving neighbor, when you begin to see people as God sees them, when we begin to pray for God to give us his eyes rather than evaluating, characterizing, stereotyping, condemning. Because to do those things, to be honest with you, is anti-gospel, is anti-Christian, because for those of us that are in Christ, there is no condemnation. Simone Biles is loved whether she wins the gold or not, whether she removes herself or not, whether she lands on her booty or whether or not she lands on her feet. And so in that, I'm kind of inspired to go, I wonder where I'm at mentally. Where am I pushing myself to my own detriment because I'm afraid of some judge out there? 
some opinion, some evaluation that I don't even know if I'm adding up to. But instead, like Jesus says, to seek today, to seek first the kingdom of God, to live into that reality that I'm his, that I am secure in the kingdom, that I cannot be removed, that the ultimate reward for me is not a medal, it's not a paycheck, it's not a house, it's not a spouse, it's not this perfect good life that I seek to create, but it's a life with God. So friends, I love you. I love all of you. I love your weaknesses. And even when I don't love you, I want to love you. And I hope that you know that. But more importantly, I hope that you know that God doesn't have to say, I want to love you. That he is love and he is loving. God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are the definition of love that you don't even have the option not to. So Father, I pray for us. I pray for the judgments that divide, the divisions that have been created. I pray for our propensity to try to cut down rather than to build up, for our way that we define people by what their most visible sin is rather than the way that you do, Lord, that your word tells us that you don't look to the outside as man does, but you look at the inside, the heart. And God, we're brokenhearted, we're weak, we're frail, but we know that your grace is sufficient. God, help us to rest in your promises. Help to, us to live out your commands to love you and to love others, God. And Father, I pray that the true me measure of our spiritual maturity would be how we love. So God, I pray that at the end of the day, we would not be described by our athletic prowess, by our bank account, by the title next to our name, but instead we would be defined by how we love you and love others. God, we confess we fall short. And we ask for your forgiveness, for your renewal, for your transformation. It's in your son's name I pray, amen. Friends, a couple of prayer requests. One, um, just want to tell you we're super excited. We're gonna be kicking off just in a few weeks our, our kids ministry. We're gonna be full blown August 15th, but in that we wanna invite you to be a part of it. We wanna invite you to be a part of uh, kids ministry both hours, 9 a.m. and 10.30. We wanna be able to serve young families at both hours, to see them be able to come in and worship together, to see kiddos get to experience Jesus for the first time in a loving atmosphere. And maybe you've been trying to figure out, how do I plug in, how do I get involved? Oh man, kids ministry is amazing. Because you learn. You learn what it means when Jesus says, let these little ones come to me, that you get to be a part of that, that you get to see what childlike faith is like. And so we encourage you just to consider, to prayerfully just wonder, well, how could God use me in that way? And in turn, you get connected with others that are doing the same thing, that are asking those same questions. And so really wanna encourage you to be praying uh, towards that. Above that, we have a few other things going on, that just some people with some surgeries today and. Um, some family members who have gotten some bad news recently, some of you that are sick, just be praying for one another, reach out. Don't uh, put yourself in just isolation wallowing, but instead reach out into our community. We'd love to be able to pray for you and love on you. Love you guys, praying for you, pray for me.